Hello, YouTube. I've got a pretty cool video for you guys today, and that is going to be about a topic of why you're not losing fat despite having a very low calorie intake. And this is probably one of the biggest mistakes and one of the biggest mistakes when it comes to expectations when you're on a fat loss diet. So I'm looking forward to uh, sharing this uh, with you guys as well, going right now to my favorite Thai place here in uh, Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Gonna be pretty awesome. It's gonna be my pre-workout meal for today and then I'm gonna have to hit the gym afterwards. But an hour and a half after the meal, it should be fine. It's not gonna be a huge meal, but it's gonna be enough to give me some protein, some good carbs to fuel that training. And let's uh, head on and see what's up in Plaza del Carmen. <laughs> Who is sad that Casey Neistat stopped making daily vlogs? He's one of my favorite vlogger. I've got a lot of inspiration for him. Pretty sad to see him go, but I'm also excited to see what else he's gonna uh, put out because he's a filmmaker, he's a very, very creative guy, and I'm pretty excited to see. I'm sure it's gonna be something epic, so pretty cool, very inspirational. I probably wouldn't have ever come to the idea of doing vlogs if it wasn't for Casey Neistat. I'm sure that that's the same for a lot of people watching YouTube videos. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to see his future stuff. So we're at my favorite Thai restaurant here in Plata del Carmen. My name is Po Thai. Pretty cool place to have a pre-workout meal, to hit the gym afterwards. I'm gonna wait up about two hours to hit the gym. And the topic, as I said, that I wanted to share with you guys a little bit of insight on is why you might not be losing body fat even though you're on a low calorie diet, right? So people are often messaging me and saying, well, I'm eating 1600 calories, I'm eating 17, 1800 calories, and my body fat is not dropping. Well, there could be a number of reasons why this is the case, but two primary reasons. Well, number one is that you're not actually consuming that amount of calories, right? If your body is in a negative energy balance, if you are actually in that caloric deficit, there's uh, gonna be fat loss, right? There's gonna be weight loss, that's inevitable. There's uh, tons and tons of research studies confirming this, and that's the first part, right? But there are people who are actually tracking their calories very, very accurately, 100% of the time, and they are still not losing body fat. So what is happening there? Well, that's the case where you have a quote-unquote adaptive metabolism. That is what it's often referred to as uh, time where your body is very adapted to low calories, but also to high calories. So it's a case where, let's say, I used myself as an example here, for me to cut down to very low body fat levels, I sometimes have to go really low on calories, so that would be 1,800 to maybe to 2,000 calories a day, which is really hardcore considering that I'm exercising six days a week, I'm doing a ton of cardio, I'm moving around a lot, and I still have to go to really, really extreme levels of quote-unquote extreme for that amount of activity, but let's say when I'm gaining, I barely gain any weight at 3,300 calories, right? So there's kind of like a in-between, almost like a buffer where my body adapts really well to overfeeding, but it also adapts really well when I cut the calories. And that's a very interesting fact that I think there, there's a minority of people out there for that this might be the case for because your body, your, your NEAT levels, non excess activity thermogenesis is so adaptive that it kind of counteracts the fact that you are eating those low calories. But it kind of goes both directions. So when you're in a quote unquote bulk, you can enjoy a lot of food and you're not gonna gain any fat there and you're gonna minimize fat gain. But also when you're cutting down, it kind of really sucks because you have to eat a very a low amount of food and you know, you can't eat a lot of food and you're barely losing any body fat. So this is very important to kind of know and to point out because I see a lot of people out there not really understanding the calories in, calories out model and thinking that the model doesn't work. Well, the model definitely works and it's proven by a lot of science. I mean, there's a lot of evidence pointing out and by now we know that it's, uh, that it's accurate, but it's important to understand that if you are looking at the calories in, calories model, it's not just calories in, calories out. It's actually a breakdown. What is that calorie out portion? And it comes down to four factors. When we're talking about thermic effect of food, we're talking about uh, your basal metabolic rate, we're talking about your physical activity, and also your NEAT levels. So these four components are the most important factors to look at each one of them when you're looking at how adaptive your metabolism is. So in terms of basal metabolic rate, 
There's a little bit of difference as you're losing body fat. Of course, your body weight drops down, so your basal metabolism will be slowing down a little bit, but not to too much of a degree. And then we have the thermic effect of food. Essentially, as you're eating less food, you're using less of energy to metabolize that food. So about 10% of your calories goes to processing that food. So there's a little bit of adaptation there. Physical activity, you can kind of, I guess, um, say that you burn a little bit less calories because your body weight now is lowered. So if you're doing deliberate cardio or if you're doing gym, you, you do burn a little bit less calories, but that meat component, that's the most adaptive component out of the four, and it can actually vary a lot. And there's one really cool study back from the uh, 90s. I remember that, uh, the study on twins. They took about um, 12 pairs of twins and they actually overfed them a lot of calories. And between the pairs of twins, there was a massive difference of how and where they stored body fat. So some of them didn't store almost any of that body fat. Some of them stored it in the stomach, some of them stored it in a variety of different butt parts in their body. So it's kind of a, you don't know what you're getting. You know, it depends on your genetics, where you're gonna store, where you're gonna burn it off from. It depends on how much you're gonna store, how much your body's metabolism will adapt. So it's really important to understand this. So people, when you talk about calories in, calories out, they look at a very simplistic kind of formula. They look at, okay, am I eating amount of this calories and my calorie tracker says I burned this amount, why am I not losing body fat? Well, it's not that simple. There's a lot of adaptive components. There's a lot of things happening. So it's important to understand this when we're regulating uh, our body composition goals, when you're looking at how many calories you're eating. So you might sometimes need to undercut those calories if you want to reach that goal. So don't be afraid to go lower because your body is adapting, especially if you're someone who's just starting out who doesn't have a ton of muscle mass be built already, you, you might have to go to those 1600s, you know, 1700 calories in some days to really push that fat loss. I mean, even me with five, six years of experience lifting, I still have to go to 1800, 1900 to lose fat. So I mean, despite having a little bit of more muscle mass than the, than the average Joe who just entered the gym, I mean, my metabolism is just the way it is. So don't get caught up too much with the, what seems to be low or what seems to be high. It doesn't matter as much. What matters is what works for you. And if you're measuring your calories using tools like MyFitnessPal, if you're measuring your body weight, if you're taking regular metrics in terms of like waist, body fat measurements, caliper, whatever it is, just make adjustments. Make adjustments that work for you. Don't look at what other people are doing because you might hear someone cutting down on 3,000 calories. And that might work for them, but that doesn't work for you. So it's important to find out exactly what type of metabolism you have and then make adjustments based on that. So that's something I wanted to share with you guys here. Uh, pretty cool to know when you're losing body fat because you don't get discouraged when you don't lose on certain calories. You know, it just means that you need to cut down or add more activity. And it's not uncommon to see guys with 10 years of experience doing five sessions of cardio and eating 19, 1800 calories sometimes to get to very, very lean levels. That's just normal, that's the way it is, right? So we have to accept that fact and adjust and make sure that that uh, just is adjusted for and to expect that to be able to happen if that, that is your metabolism, that is a possible scenario. So hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if that is you who has this adaptive metabolism. So def definitely hit me up in the comments below. Aside from that, waiting for the meal here in my favorite Thai place, it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit as soon as it comes. And uh, looking forward to hitting the gym today as well. It is uh, Monday, the time of filming this video. Time to uh, get some Romanian deadlifts, high frequency training. Uh, really kicking my ass for the last couple of weeks since I've been doing this. And uh, yeah, pretty excited for that. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys soon. Peace.